Dean Smith Center opened in 1986. Jimmy Valvano coached four times in this building. He won once. It was his final game here. That was in 1990. We welcome you to the inaugural ACC-SEC Challenge. It's presented by Continental Tire. Here at the Smith Center, it is a sonic blockbuster. Two top 20 teams, the Tennessee Volunteers and the North Carolina Tar Heels, and it will be bumpy. 21,000 expected on hand. It's a whiteout, as you can tell, with a smattering of orange. And both of these teams coming off of preseason tournaments in which they were tested. And Jimmy Dykes, they're going to be tested again. Myron Metcalf will join us shortly. What an atmosphere for the ACC-SCC Challenge. Yeah, partner, it's great to be back with you, first of all. And what a first night for us, huh? 21,000 in the Dean Dome. Big-time ball game that will have major impacts come March. You look at Tennessee, they're the preseason favorite in the SEC. They're a little angry right now losing yep. two in Maui. North Carolina, I was with them in Atlantis. They are a legitimate top 20 team. You look at the storyline for this blockbuster tonight. Tennessee's the SEC favorites, but they've lost two straight, and they are not happy about it. They are angry, and they are tough and physical for this matchup. Can the Tar Heels get Armando Baycott going? Phenomenal on the glass, Ravi. Only averaged nine points in three games in Atlantis. He's too good for those kind of numbers. And the transfers in this game, Harrison Ingram for North Carolina, Dalton Connect from Tennessee, two of the most impactful transfers we have in college ball. It is time now for our Sonic Blockbuster to get underway. They have dealt with a lot of big centers and they've given up some points. It'll be a big challenge for Jonas Adu of Tennessee to deal with Armando Baycott. Set for the tip and underway. Controlled by Zakai Ziegler back in the starting lineup off the season in which he was lost to an ACL surgery. He has been off with his shot early, trying to get his confidence back with that leg as Santiago Vescovi in his fifth year joins him in the backcourt. Vescovi from the foul line, no good, and the rebound to North Carolina, and that is R.J. Davis. He'll bring the ball up along with the freshman, and the freshman is today's story for them. Elliot Cadeau, he wears number two. Our starting lineups brought to you by Dove Men Plus Care. Harrison Ingram gives Hubert Davis an aspect he hasn't had for several years. Bounce to Baycott. This is Ingram. His first shot. Good from three. And Randy, to your point, he's the most versatile offensive player that Hubert Davis has. Plays that hard match four position. Knocks down three, can make plays off the bounce, can ISO back you in and bully ball you. Terrific transfer find for Hubert Davis. He's an emotional tone setter for the team. This has to be into the paint to Josiah Jordan James, another guy that came back as they're under five on the shot clock. And Vescovy has to get rid of it. Ziegler looked to the clock, fires, that's off. And it goes out of bounds. It'll be North Carolina basketball. I like the teeth of Hubert teams early defensively. And there is Hubert Davis in his third year, 12th season on the staff. He's used a handful of the different starting lineups, three of them in the Bahamas. But they are healthy tonight. Cormac Ryan, who was out with some ankle issues, is available and we'll see action tonight for Carolina. Tennessee is so physical on the defensive end. We watched hour and hour of film with Tennessee last night. The term tough and physical was said 30 or 40 times out of Rick Barnes in a one hour film session. Not happy at all or pleased with how his guys played against Kansas. He felt they were soft. I expect Tennessee to play with an anchor and a chip on their shoulder for the next two hours. Two and one at the Maui Invitational. They lost to number two, Purdue, and number one, Kansas. And here they are on the road dealing with a North Carolina team. That's a top 20. Bad pass inbounds right into the hands of Escovy, and he stole it. And here's Dalton Connect. He takes it to the rack. No good, but he is fouled. And Dalton Connect, who has been an outstanding offensive force for Rick Barnes' team early, will go to the free throw line to shoot two. The graduate student who transferred from the University of Northern Colorado. Rabbi, anything soft and lackadaisical against Tennessee will not work in this building tonight for North Carolina. And that was just a habit pass that Tennessee had bodies on bodies when the ball was handed out of bounds. Chewed up the play and ignite the run game for Dalton Connect. First free throw, crawls over the iron. This is a guy that led the big sky in scoring last year at over 20 a game, 22-23. 
And this year, 17 and a half, he's a terrific three-point shooter. And as Rick Barnes preaches, his team is built, as you said, on tough physical defense. They want to see Connect rise up a little bit on that side of the basketball. Already two free throw attempts for Tennessee, only eight altogether against Kansas. Just their inability to punch the paint. Could do cross court. Ingram again for three. That's the bottom. And he's two of two, and he's got six early points. You cannot leave Harrison Ingram. He's too valuable on that weak side. They find him for those weak side bombs. You get to stay hugged up for 55 and white. They do, and Baycott will be a terrific matchup down low. Best could be the hard drive, and it's connect. He fires from three. And that's halfway down and out. Davis, he'll fire a quick three. No good. Battle for the boards. Baycott may do fighting for it. And exactly what you'd expect early in this game from these two teams, where physicality is absolutely an emphasis. Well, Armando Baycott is one of the top rebounders in all of college basketball. And his ability to run down loose balls, rebound out of his area. And Tennessee, I've been watching the first couple of minutes. They are touching up Mondo Baycott on every possession, making him feel them defensively, setting the rules in terms of the physical play that we're going to bring to you tonight. Hubert Davis and Carolina take pride in their ability to get to the free throw line as they drive from Cadeau. He kicks Ingram again. No, that's short. Go with an offensive rebound. Baycott, a little jump hook, and that will go in. I think that's where he's at his best. He's not a back to the basket, power move, drop step, and dunk it. He's very good, man, with those both paws six, seven feet around the rim. Carolina up 8 2, thanks to two Ingram threes and that Baycott baby hook. James got size. And a pretty pull up as he goes right over R.J. Davis. He won the battle for the elbow to Josiah Jordan James. That's a huge part of offense. Withers takes it. He took it right into Orange Arms, and it was denied. Now Connect, instead of pulling up, hard to the basket. Dalton Connect's influence on this game being felt. It's a two-point Carolina lead. Elliot Cadeau is the back defender in that transition defense. He is not yet dog tough in those transition defensive stop plays. Ingram behind a Bangkok screen. That's off to the left. So after hitting his first two, he's missed his last two. Connect picked his pocket to Ingram, and here he comes. And he'll flush it with his left hand. Talk about two impact players that have come to these programs. Ingram for Carolina and Connect for Tennessee. And Maui Connect got caught dribbling a little too often. Has the ball picked as they get it down low to Adu who lays it in. You want a pass by Vescovy, man, to lead Adu. RJ Davis right back at you. They want to play quick. They don't want to deal with Tennessee's half-court defense if they if they can avoid it. They've hit three threes so far. You will get screen in every possession when you play Tennessee. Ziegler pulls up. High arcing jump shot. That's a big sign for Tennessee. The shot's been off a little bit early. Yeah, pretty simple offense, though. But that action has been good for Tennessee over the years against North Carolina. A little side step up screen to get those 12, 13 foot jump shots. Amazing how quickly Ziegler's recovered from that torn ACL and how hard he worked to get back. Until Barnes, he was ready to go in July. Davis again. That's too strong and connect with the box up. And they're going to get Withers, Jalen Withers, the Louisville transfer, but a foul trying to get an offensive rebound. Good, quick start. 13 10, Carolina leading Tennessee. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. And in part by the Sonic Footlong Quarter Pound Chili Cheese Coney. For a limited time, only at Sonic. A couple of substitutions coming in as we take a timeout. It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. Welcome back. We're North Carolina is up 13 to 10 on Tennessee. Cancer has affected so many people and their lives. Hubert Davis lost his mother, Bobby Davis, when he was 16 years old to oral cancer. It changed his life. He said she was his best friend, and he had to really adjust to that. It's V-Week. 
at ESPN when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research. This is game-changing research that helps save lives. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Of course, it was around that time where Rick Barnes was recruiting Hubert, uh, Hubert Davis to George Mason. So they've known each other for so long. It was right after Hubert lost his mom. And Barnes and Hubert Davis are very close. And there was a double dribble called against Dalton Connect. At the point that, that that was the first scholarship offer that Rick Barnes made as a head coach was to Hubert Davis. And it kind of told you the vision that he had and how to build a team. He wanted high quality character guys that were coachable, wanted to be hard coach. He saw that in Hubert Davis, although he didn't get him. He gave his vision of how Rick Barnes was going to be going forward for the next 30 plus years. Cormac Ryan into the game. He fires and off the bench. Just too strong. Ingram on hustle. Connect for that offensive rebound. Dalton Connect wanted no part of the collision for that ball. Baker using his throw. That's, a, that's on Dalton Connect. That's a 50-50 ball that he gave the 20% effort on. And I expect Dalton Connect to be the first guy checking out with the next dead ball. That, that's the kind of play that Rick Barnes has very little tolerance for. Jordan Ganey, ball handling now for Tennessee. He is a terrific outside shooter, so he and Ziegler now in the backcourt. And Adu will fire from about 15, 17 feet away and knock it down. I think it's important for Adu to take those open jump shots tonight. Baycott wants to stay in drop coverage for the most part. He wants to protect that rim. Adu has the ability to stretch it. What a luxury that Hubert Davis has with Cadeau, the freshman, the preseason ACC freshman of the year, handling the ball, takes great care of it. Ingram working on Ganey. He's got the switch he wanted. Now they kick it. They move it around, and it's Ryan again. That time, he finds the bottom. Ryan, the Notre Dame captain, last three years. Impacts the game here right off the bench. Just big-time offense by North Carolina, because Harrison Ingram playing iso bully ball, and he kind of double with a stunt. Man, that ball got reversed two passes to a wide-open Cormac Ryan, the most natural shooter that Carolina has. Connect again, dribbling and nearly lost it. Jemai Meshack into the game for Tennessee, wearing 15. Five in the shot clock as they start the offense way out top. Ziegler high. And they have a run out. They don't see Baycott down there with Ziegler on him. Cadeau finds him now deep in the paint. And he's going to get fouled by Adu. Boy, did he catch that deep in the paint. That is that North Carolina run game. 100 RPMs. I go back to this movement of the ball. You double-team Harrison Ingram, and it's a sw simple swing-swing to Cormac Ryan in that far corner. But it all starts with the playmaking ability of Harrison Ingram. Ravi, think about what Ingram's doing for this team. Knocking down 50% of his threes. He's their number two in assists. He's their number two rebounder, and he leads them in steals. Touching the game in every area is 55-1. Yeah, he's got eight points early on, and Armando Baycott knocks down his first free throw. He's having a very good year early at the strike. Making about 85, 86% of his free throws. He's been a 65% free throw shooter. Well, I talked to him in Atlantis about it. He said, all I've done is just kind of slowed myself down. I'm not rushing at the free throw line. One simple smooth motion. And that's a major jump. I mean, he was leaving four or five points a game on the charity stripe last year. No longer the case. Ingram and Baycott will get a break here for North Carolina into the game. Jalen Washington, 13, and Zayden Hine, number one. Adu will also get a break. As we're at the 1247 mark, we'll get the under 12 timeout. So they'll get the extra breather there. 2012, North Carolina leading Tennessee. Carolina has made four of nine from three. It's interesting, Tennessee trying to set the tone early on how physical the game's going to be. They're screening right now, Rabbi, instead of slipping screens. You want to set the rules of the game? Man, set hard screens, don't slip out of them. And they got a good action off of it. Just an errant pass and the turnovers by Tennessee early. Yeah, they had Ganey on the baseline wide open. He wasn't looking for it. And the pass from Josiah Jordan James sails out of bounds. The number one defensive efficiency team in the country is Tennessee. Oh, from the outside, that is Jalen Washington. Tennessee. He's made a couple of threes already. Right, they're not reacting to the ball on the flight. You've got to be there and take away the airspace. The numbers drop dramatically if you're within three feet of the shooter on the catch, and they increase dramatically if you're greater than four feet. 
four turnovers early for Tennessee, and they are down 23-12. High screen set, kick, Ryan three. No good. Loose ball, another 50-50 ball in the hands of Carolina. Ryan fires again. He'll end up shooting three free throws. Josiah Jordan-James fouled him right in front of the Tennessee bench. What a start for Carolina. They're on an 8-0 run as we take a timeout. When we come back, Jimmy, part of the ACC-SEC Challenge, his all-time ACC team. Ravi, it took me a while to come up with this list. So many good ones to choose from. I had to go with Michael Jordan, David Thompson from NC State, Tyler Hansborough, the most competitive college basketball player I've ever personally seen, and then the great Tim Duncan and Ralph Sampson. I know there's no Lynn Bias, Christian Leitner, J.J. Redd. Just keep on going down the line, but it's hard for me to pass up 50 and white Tyler Hansborough and Michael Jordan. And the rebounding, the tenacity, and the toughness of Tyler Hansborough really set the bar in terms of how you're supposed to play the game today. And the great Michael Jordan, I put him on there. I know his numbers weren't outstanding in college, but I did but play it's against Michael him. Jordan. Michael Jordan. <laughs> right. I did play as Michael Jordan. I did play against him when they were number one. Right. I was at Arkansas. And you now Rick Barnes told us today one thing that he always admired about Dean Smith was Dean's ability to get a shot off in special situations. And we played. Michael's team in 1983, they were ranked number one undefeated. And we made a basket with about four seconds to go. They called timeout. I remember Coach Sutton saying, hey, they will get a good look. And sure enough, he threw it to half court, called timeout. The very next pass got Steve Hill a pretty good look from the corner. And Dean Smith still one of the all-time best ever in those special situations. And what, what is one of the things we watched them work on today during shoot around? That, that exact, that same, exact thing. same thing. Hubert had to play with five seconds to go, four seconds, three seconds, and two. And Ryan makes all three of his free throws. This is the largest deficit as you take a look at the great legendary coach here, Roy Williams. Of course, the court named after him. Lead at 26-12. This is the largest deficit Tennessee has faced all year. They were down 11 to Kansas. But on the other side, Carolina had double-digit leads in five of their six games, and in their loss to Villanova, they led by nine at one point. Where is Tennessee's offense going to come from? They're down 26 to 12 here, under 12 to go. Ganey's going to try. He pulls up. That's contested, and that is off. Look at the tough twos that Tennessee has been forced to take in this game. Their inability to get the ball at the rim, very concerning. Gets the switch. He now has Josiah Jordan James on him. Mac Ryan twisted both ankles. And we weren't sure he was going to play. He obviously is and making an impact. They got Mason off the floor. And he's put up and in by Jalen Washington. He's got five. Tennessee playing really small right now. Mason had to play that defensive five position. Tennessee's going to have to find their groove. It's a knockout punch early for North Carolina. Tennessee backed up on the ropes. That corner sets the screen for Ganey, and now Mesha. He goes with 10. Hard drive, soft touch, no good. And we may get it on the floor. There was a clear out of Josiah Jordan James. And he was in the air. It looked like he was pushed from behind, and it will be a foul against Carolina. Well, this is one of Rick Barnes' best offensive teams that he's had. That they have struggled shooting the ball from distance. 17 out of 63 in their last two games at Maui. And I'm very impressed with Bill, with North Carolina's ability to hold up in a physical game. They hold up against Villanova. I think Hubert Davis has his guys believing that they will not be out tough this year because they were multiple times last year and finally connect, connects. He needed that. A three-pointer from the corner off the inbounds. The last Carolina foul was against Seth Trimble, who is arguably their best defender. He wears seven. Ryan, the hard take. Lefty flips it up and in didn't go, but he will go to the free throw line where he is deadly. Well, Dalton Connect can take and make guarded shots. He's all of 6'6". There's not a lot of space there. Trimble, the best defense the player that Hubert Davis has, is checking him. But Connect can rise and fire and find the rim about any time he wants. He's been careless with the ball so far in this atmosphere. And defensively, the loose ball still bothers me. Does it not bother you? Well, you, you saw that in the tournament. You've seen it here. And I assume in the big sky, having not seen him play as often as we do now, he, he probably was relied on to create his own shot, to dribble a lot. He made 77 
three-point field goals last year. He's a 38% three-shooter, and this year, Jimmy, he has scored into tonight 35 more points than anybody else on Tennessee. And he made himself into a player because Dalton Connect had no offers from out of high school, so he had to go to JUCO and then to Northern Colorado, but absolutely has worked himself into a guy that will be on an NBA roster next year. Now, the defense and the toughness, there's still growth in front of him, but you cannot deny the offensive skill of three and one. Lions made all five of his free throws. They are up by 15. Gainey driving against Trimble. We'll see how good he is defensively. Connect dribbling again to James. Rain open, yeah. and he drove right by his man for the flush. Washington got beaten. Again, Josiah Jordan James wins the elbow. Mm -hmm. You drive the ball or cut through the elbow or the nail offensively, you win games. Ingram back in. Washington low against Connect. He got it picked by Vescovy. James drives again, and he will lay it up and in right by Jalen Washington. Hubert Davis is going to have to get Washington out of the game because he is no factor right now on the defensive end. Just blow by, open up the hips, and Triple J takes advantage of it. 15-point lead, cut down to 11. Davis, long three. Oh, boy, he banked it in. That was unintentional, but it's three more points for North Carolina. And they may get a foul underneath after on Ziegler. As he and Trimble got tied up, and they will call that foul on Ziegler. Good R.J. Davis going to his left. That's what you want to force him to do, make him deck it and go to his left. And there's the hard contact between Ziegler and Trimble. Carolina with 33 points. Barnes talked to the officials, and they're going to take a look at the monitor. Hubert Davis is asking what it is, in fact, that we are taking a look at. You saw that lowering of the shoulder. It was Josiah Jordan James who went over to the officials and was pleading something. But a red hot start here for Carolina. Tennessee hasn't allowed more than 35 in the half this season. And we got 9.26 to go. And what's the contact again between Ziegler and Trimble? And just a shoulder by Ziegler knocks Trimble down. It's a common foul on five in orange, I agree with the call. Now think about Tennessee's defense right now. They lead the country, Ravi, in defensive efficiency, only allowing 87 points per possession. I mean, 87 points per 100 possession. Okay, Houston, 87.9, Mississippi State, 89. Those are the only three teams in the country holding opponents below 90 for every 100 possession. And Rick Barnes' squad defensively, they find their teeth in this game. They have the ability to get hot on defense crawl their way back in. Yeah, Ingram wide open. left wide open. <laughs> Backs connect in, throws it up and in, and he is on his way with anybody. He's in double figures with 10, and it's 35-19. They're shooting 60% from the floor. Where was the fight by Dalton Connect, though, on the one bounce back down? James is left open. He pulls up, and he's keeping them in it. Josiah Jordan James. They are finding Tennessee those elbow jump shots. And it's, it's not the highest percentage shot, but they're taking what North Carolina is giving them defensively. Kadoga James on him. Trimble baseline. See right up in front of Connect off the window. That's an assist, though, by Mondo Baycott to seal his guy off and just carve out space for the rim attack. Really well done by Baycott. Good hands, Trimble, and a whistle and a foul on Vescovy. Boy, a couple of good defensive plays by Carolina Ingram and now Trimble. Clean picks of Tennessee dribblers. Yeah, North Carolina's been really good now with their hands defensively without fouling. Does Tennessee a lack of respect for the quick hand defense of North Carolina? There's that seal off by Baycott on Meshack. Just opens it up and 
Trimble, the kid that doesn't shoot balls out of the corner. He makes plays out of the corner. And a frustrating Santi Vescovi tells Double Z to scoot over. Paxson Wojcik, he's into the game for Carolina. Daniel's the coach here. He has the ball in his hands. Guarded by Connect. Adu back in the game as Good well. Part. Good give and go. Up off the window. Trimble takes that pass from Baycott. I told you he's a guy that makes plays out of the corner. He doesn't shoot out of the corner. And a hard, fast, violent cut by Seth Trimble. I mean, the cut is right through the midsection of the lane, Ravi. He doesn't shortcut it. Gives himself a little bit of distance for the pass. Watch the cut. This is a violent cut by Trimble. Once he gives it up, right through the middle of the lane to perfection. Yeah, 12 points against Arkansas. We'll see the Razorbacks and Duke. One of our ACC SEC challenge next. Meshack in the paint. He threw one up and missed it. Cadeau, good pass. Baycott camped underneath. He's got a chance for a three point play, and the Heels are having their way. You have to go back to Kendall Marshall to find a point guard for North Carolina that brings that ball with zip and gas and finds people as well as Elliot Cadeau. Armando Baycott runs and establishes his big rear end right in front of that rim, and it is over. The speed of two, the power of five. Tar Heels are donkey stomping Tennessee early. Well, it's been a minute since we were together, and last night we got a chance to share a meal, Jimmy, which was a delight, but you did an awful lot of eating last night. Well, I heard about the Mondo Burger when I was in Atlanta with Armando Baycott, and he said, you got to get one when you come to town. And it was delivered last night to perfection. It's a big-time burger at the Town Hall Burger and Beer. And then I was the first one ever, the first ever, to sample Cadeau's chicken and waffles. Yeah. It's new on the menu, and I was the first one served served it up last night in a, a big time place what tremendous people in there you know we asked for a diet soda and for some reason they 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 didn't have it they couldn't produce and find one 10 minutes later ava delivered a bottle of diet soda she had sent somebody or herself went out to get it so to ava to the ownership to town hall to kado the mondo to you Unbelievable effort last night. <laughs> Myron. Well, I mean, Tennessee might be thinking about post-game food as well, but they were in the timeout saying, listen, it's still a game. Jonas effort last night. <laughs> Myron. Well, I mean, Tennessee might be thinking about post-game food as well, but they were in the timeout saying, listen, it's still a game. Jonas Adu interrupted Rick Barnes and said, it's pride at this point. Like, either you want it or you don't. They've doubled up our points. And we got to take it one possession at a time. And you can see Myron. He's trying different combinations. He got Ganey back in the game. They have a freshman who they believe is going to be a big-time player. The 6'11", 240-pounder on a Scarborough, Maine. He wears 13. That's J.P. Estrella. He has the ball now. He just did a phenomenal job of sealing off on that last play and getting a layup. Another turnover careless by Tennessee. Ingram pushed out, and he throws it up, and he crashes into the photographers there. We'll see who that foul is going to be called against. As we remind everybody, it's the women who take center stage. The SEC AC Challenge starts with number one, South Carolina. They're going to be right here in Chapel Hill. The Tar Heel women are rated 24th. That's 7 Eastern time. And then Virginia Tech and number seven, LSU. Angel Reese back with LSU after missing four games, both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. That's one of the biggest storylines in the women's game. Angel Reese has missed the last four games with no explanation. The most outstanding player of the final four. Success has a way to test you. We'll see how Angel Reese and that LSU program moves forward because certainly a rocky start to the season for Kim Mulkey and her squad. But phenomenal talent is Angel Reese. Trimble goes out, gaining into the game number two for Tennessee. And with that layup, that puts him over the 1,000 point mark in his career. And he, of course, was a star at USC Upstate. And Carolina goes full court pressure here. 44-23. Carolina shooting about 67% from the floor. It's been a different story for North Carolina. As that three ball was mid uh, by Tennessee, I should say, as that three went begging. And then Estrella knocked it out of bounds, and he's going to get called for a foul. Now Cameron Carr is coming out. And he just checks in and shoots a first side of the floor, one pass 
contested three-point shot. Rick Barnes pretty much having the same conversation with him right now. I mean, this is a learning experience, but we came here to win if you're Rick Barnes. And you cannot allow a guy to just stay in the game because you want him to get experience. Yeah, too many kids down. think they have a right to play. That's right. And Baycott, improved free throw shooting, knocks down another one. Armando Baycott double figures with 10. He's made all four of his free throws. He and Ingram have 22 of the 45 points. And it's been an awfully impressive performance by North Carolina here in the first half. Yeah, be hanging out with Baycott in Atlanta. I, I know this from spending time with that young man. He cares greatly about North Carolina basketball. He wants to do special stuff this year, but his respect for this program is as good as they've ever had as a player. Zaya Jordan James to 10. Turnovers have been a story, seven of them for Tennessee, only three for North Carolina. Seven minutes to go in the first half. Bounce pass to Baycott. That time better defense, and it was Estrella he just ran into. James trying to back down Cadeau, gets some help, and it's Ingram who had it connect to the rack and lays it up and in. Well, very fortunate, though, because, again, he starts scraping down on that ball, and Tennessee not strong with it at all, getting the ball, Ravi, outside of their shoulders and outside their hips, and defensive hands come in and just eat it up. Well, knowing what the DNA of Tennessee is, North Carolina is playing Tennessee's ball game, aren't they? They're, they are out toughing Tennessee That's right now. Cadeau tried an alley-oop there to Baycott, and a hand got up, and it's deflected out of bounds by James. But everything that Rick Barnes preaches to his team, that's exactly what Hubert Davis does with his team. His team is doing it. Well, his team last year broke apart on him. Hubert Davis did. Yeah. He'll be the first one to tell you, they had a lot of stuff to flush down the toilet and get behind them, but they are connected, they're together. It's a talented group. Again, the transfer of Harrison Ingram and Cormac Ryan has made a huge difference in this Carolina team. Davis, tough shot, fading away. That's off the iron, and it is Tennessee basketball. A lot of basic is what Tennessee calls it. Motion offense out of Tennessee early. Again, one pass, a guarded three. That's not how you get back in the game. Great right pass. Rush. Cadell found him again. They oh, are he good. They are winning the pipe part of the floor is North Carolina. And Rick Barnes now has to go with another big. Armando Baycott, Cadeau, speed, power, Tar Heels rolling. Elliot Cadeau has got four assists. And man, does he have terrific vision. Carolina all over Tennessee shooting 63%. Well, the run game is hot right now. I mean, Baycott just takes off on a sprint. And once they get the ball to Cadeau, he has already thought one pass ahead. C Cadeau's the type of kid, he knew where he was going with the ball before he ever got it. And that's that pipe part of the floor that I'm talking about, that Rick Barnes talked to his guys about today. If we don't win the pipe, we're not going to win the game. Baycott is certainly, along with Cadeau, controlling that part of the floor. Tennessee lost to Purdue, number two, number one, Kansas, and very much in danger here. 5.44 to go, down 48-27. And the pass there and coming over the top is Cormac Ryan, who'll pick up the foul. I don't know what the record is for points allowed under Rick Barnes and a half. But there's a real good chance it's going to be set, right? His career, possibly. Cade Phillips is 12. He's got that mask over his nose. He's into the game now. And he's a freshman out of Jacksonville, Alabama. James pulls up for a three. That's off to the right, way off. And Phillips picks up an offensive rebound. And now he loses it. Cadell one-on-one -on -one with Meshack. Uses his body. Misses Ryan. The follow -up. And they are winning every loose ball right now. They're the faster team. They're the, the tougher team, but they're also the faster team to all those 50-50 balls. Connect with a cut. Throws that in with his left hand. Connect is starting to pile up points. I mean, let me say this about Cormac Ryan. He's from New York City, and he brings a toughness and a swagger and moxie to this North Carolina team that they have sorely missed. High arcing three, too long. Ganey may have got away with a push in the back on Baycott. Connects got 11. Phillips in the paint. Ingram got his hand on it. No foul, but it would be Tennessee basketball. 
Yeah, they get a couple of guys. You know, R.J. Davis is a White Plains, New York guy. Ryan, you said, out of New York. Cadoza, West Orange, New Jersey kid. They have a little East Coast flavor here. He will go to the bench. They got a half a hundred with 454 against one of the better defensive teams in the country. Danny's three, no good, deflected out, and they're going to get a foul on Phillips underneath. Ninth foul called against Tennessee. And as we head the other way, we will remind everyone what a college football lineup for you this weekend. Friday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Washington tries to stay unbeaten. They face Oregon for the Pac-12 title. Tremendous game. Saturday at noon, Texas, Oklahoma State, Big 12 crown. 8 o'clock, Florida State, unbeaten. Louisville, ACC championship. And then recent company at noon Eastern, the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff semifinals right here on ESPN. Cott knocks down another one. They are 13 of 13 from the free throw line. And we talked about it early. Hubert Davis' team has made 121 free throws into the game. Their opponents had shot 101. They made 20 more free throws than their opponents had shot this season. And they are now 14 of 14 in this game. Well, they are clicking offensively as well as I've seen them all year. I just did their three games in Atlanta. So they, they played well down there. But again, they're doing this against what is ranked as the number one defense in the country coming in. Blowing out Tennessee in every facet. Meshack tries to drive and he is able to put it up and in. I just don't think, I, I know, I, I, don't, 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 I know you cannot jump shoot your way back into the game if you're Tennessee. You've got a hard drive to get yourself to the free throw line and lock in defensively. Bad pass. Connect picks it off. Oh, takes it and flushes it. Ingram thought there were maybe an extra step or two. Dalton this, Connect now with 13. And this is the eighth half that Dalton Connect has been in double figures out of the 13 halves of basketball Tennessee has played this year. Connect got a hand up, and that may have affected that shot from Trimble. Phillips pushes that was deflected by Ingram. He tried to deny it, but it's out of bounds off Carolina. Look at North Carolina taking care of the basketball. Only four turnovers. Yeah. Tennessee already with eight. And R.J. Davis and Cadeau combined for seven turnovers total in Atlantis in 170 plus minutes. So that, the value of taking care of the ball. Connect underneath. They're going to call it on the floor. Withers came over. Connect really didn't have an opportunity to come down with a basketball. It's 52-33, under four in the first half, all Carolina. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball, presented by Continental Tire, is brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. So far, it has been Carolina winning the physical battle, and they are up by 21. Kev and Coach coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report. We'll look ahead to Duke and Arkansas later tonight. Talk about what makes the Blue Devils flow offensively. Tennessee allowed 50 or fewer in 12 games last year. Coach, they've given up 52 tonight. They, ha they have not made Carolina feel them at all. They their lack of physicality in their front court, their lack of toughness, they haven't disrupted the rhythm of the Carolina offense. Hey, Jimmy Dykes, I got a question for you. You got a Mondo burger, you got chicken and waffles. I mean, what is going on? You're wearing an SEC sweatshirt in ACC country? What are you doing? <laughs> hey, it, it's, it's the world of NIL, coach. <laughs> yeah, and he was wearing that SEC sweatshirt and treated like royalty in that restaurant. <laughs> was. Speaking of royalty, Baycott is putting on a show. Tennessee, by the way, is shooting 60%, and they're losing by 19. Connect will go to the free throw line and see you sit. And it's going to be on Baycott. When slow to get up. North Carolina made that run to the title game. Armando Baycott was dominant for a three or four week stretch. Sprained his ankle in that semifinal game. It bothered him really all of last year. But this is the guy that has the capability of leading North Carolina back to another Final Four appearance this year. The pieces around him are in place, Ravi. Yeah. This is Hubert Davis, one of his better three point shooting teams that he's had, 37% coming in. Last year was their worst three point shooting team. 
But make no mistake, Five and White has not started off like Zach Eady or Hunter Dickinson, but you look at all the Ken Palm ratings for National Player of the Year right now. He's in the top 10 and has not even touched what he's capable of being. His rebounding numbers are what jump off yeah. the page at you, and yet tonight he's doing it by scoring 15 points and making 7-7 seven of seven from the free throw line. Cadeau, tough catch by Ryan. Boy, good play by Cormac Ryan on a 50-50 ball from Cadeau. He drives, then the floater, no good. They caught battles, but Meshack has it. Good job of making Cadeau finish oversized. Bad pass there. Loose ball picked up. Phillips dribbled off his foot. It's out of bounds. Another turnover for Tennessee. Now think about how clean North Carolina has been with the ball. Coming into tonight's game, Ravi, North Carolina had faced 408 possessions versus man defense. They only turn it over six times a game in the true half-court offense. That's as good and as clean as you can be with a ball in a fast-paced system. Cadeau finds his man Davis, and they have numbers. He takes it to the hole. Oh, that's pretty. He plays with a check now. I'm telling you, there was no all-ACC accolades tossed towards him this year. I think it kind of burns in his gut a little bit. This kid is razor tough right now. Lasered in on the rim from the three and the rim. He's got eight. Tennessee offense. Stagnant relative to what we're seeing from Carolina. Ganey pulls up and he hits it over Ingram. It, it still to me is a simple game. The quality of my shot yes. versus the quality of your shot. North Carolina obviously winning that math equation. Davis with a blow by reverse. He's got the last four. And he's now the fourth member of Carolina in double figures in the first half. There's not one guy for Tennessee that has any pride in guarding the basketball right now. Not one. It's been a long time since I've said that about Tennessee defensively. But they have lost their identity in the last six or seven days. Janey left open for a three. That's surround and out. Phillips had to go off his head. But he controls it. The 56 points the most Barnes has given up since 21. He gave up 55 to Georgia in the first half in 21. This is the most since then. Yeah, watch R.J. Davis. He was huge in Atlanta. It's 23 against Villanova, 30 against Arkansas. And he is really rising as a six-footer from that three-point line. But his explosiveness and his toughness and his grit to seek that rim, hunt the rim, and finish over size, very impressive. Davis wears number four because his birthday is 10-21. So if you take the one, the zero, the two, and one, it adds up to four. One plus zero is one, plus two is three, plus one is four. That's why he wears the number four. Elliot Cadeau is the difference maker for Carolina. Allows Davis some freedom, too, off the ball. Josiah Jordan-James pops in his 11th point of the first half. To imagine what Rick Barnes will tell his team at the half. I, I can tell you. For an hour last night, we sat in the film with him. And for an hour, that guy right there used the word tough and physical no, no less than 35, 40 times. They caught a ball left, Randy. They triple teamed him. Ingram. So easy. Ingram has now made his fourth three-point third of the half. When you can shoot a pass uncontested, a bad pass that bounces up to your knee level, that tells you the lack of urgency that Tennessee has right now covering up shooting. Yeah, his hands deflected that ball away. They tried to get a back cut from Connect. Gee, they're going to have more than 60 points against Tennessee in the first half, assuming they score Two more. Gaining tough shot. Good box out that time. Meshack was pushed out of bounds by Davis. They keep pushing it. Ingram again. They did. They got Gainey another wide open three. In and out. They've had a few of those in the first half. A minute to go. 59-39 Carolina. Caught James battling underneath. Davis. 
Withers takes Phillips, and that's a bad pass. He got trapped on the baseline. Oh, boy, Connect nearly threw it to the official. This is not a game where you miss a shot. And look at the bench or look at the officials asking for a call. And Dalton Connect, as good as he is, it's a big moment of growth for three and orange in this building. Watch the versatility of Harrison Ingram and his ability to make plays for others and knock down shots, stretch the defense. He plays that hard match four position. But North Carolina, they, they are playing with a hot ball this half. And Tennessee has chased more than they've defended on their own defensive end. One thing that I love about Harrison Ingram and Cormac Ryan, guys that have transferred in, they have ownership in this North Carolina jersey this year. They're not renting it, right? And Hubert Davis had a good conversation with me in, in Atlantis about the fact that these guys have come in and they have absorbed everything about North Carolina basketball. They're not here to rent that jersey. Great pride and ownership from Harrison Ingram. And a great first half. He played all 40 in a game against Arkansas, two double-doubles in three games in the Bahamas. They'll try for a last shot. Deflected. He has a second. He fires. And no good. And we are going to have a foul or not. I think Cormac Ryan is going to go to the free throw line to shoot free throws. The official blew the whistle. The question was, did he get the shot off? Now, when does the official's arm go up on the call? I don't know if they called Mayshack for the initial reach on the floor before on the floor the shot. before. We can't see when Ron Groover's arm goes up. He just now creeps in on the left side. But when was that call made? Point one. I think he's going to let him shoot free throw. That is. Yeah. Cormac Ryan goes to the strike where the team is 14 for 14, and he's five for five. Wake up thinking you were going to see a team, Carolina, put 60 in the first half up against Tennessee, or any team this season do that? Well, I'm shocked because I know how good Tennessee is defensively. I'm, I'm not surprised because North Carolina has firepower to match anyone out there. That was a big boy body blow game that they held up with Villanova in overtime in Atlantis. And they've got all the pieces and a lot of mojo. No respect by North Carolina for Tennessee's defense in this first half. Just blitzed them from the opening tip. 61 points in every which way. Ingram and Baycott go for 15 apiece. Ryan has 12. Davis has 10. They made 7 of 16 from 3. They owned the glass. The points off turnovers. Impressive. Hubert Davis has to be impressed, Myron. Uh, Hubert, you play the number one team in America defensively. You go up with a big lead, 6 of 12 from 3 to start. How impressed were you by what your team did? Well, they are. They're an unbelievable defensive team, and I felt like in the first half we got our pace on the offensive end, but it, it started off defensively. We got stops, we boxed out, we rebound, and then we got out in transition, and that was just huge for us to be able to attack offensively before their defense gets set. Obviously, you have a big lead, but what's going to be the message to your team to maintain the momentum going into the second half? Hubert? Well, you have to play two halves, and, you know, our message is the same at the beginning of the game. We have to be solid on both ends of the floor. The thing for us that we always focus on is three things, defensively, rebounding the basketball, and taking care of the basketball, and we feel like if we check those three boxes, it puts us in a good position. Thanks a lot, Hubert. Thank you. Tennessee went one of 12 from three-point land. One of 12 and continues what has been a struggle for them early. No problem for North Carolina. They shoot almost 60%. They didn't miss a free throw. They took 16 of them. The Jeep Halftime Report, Kevin and Seth. Kevin, take it away. 
Welcome back, everyone, to the inaugural ACC SEC Challenge. It's presented by Continental Tire. We're about set for the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster, Tennessee and North Carolina. And it has been all Carolina. They lead at 61-39. They have owned every single category that you want to own as a coach. And a lot of times you wonder what it would be like to be a fly on the wall. Every fly that was in the Tennessee locker room bugged out. They were intimidated. They didn't want to hear what Coach Barnes had to say. What was the fundamental difference in the first half? Well, to me, this is all about North Carolina. Now, Tennessee has not played their best, but North Carolina has had a heck of a lot to do with it, Ravi. I said in the first two or three minutes, Tennessee's inability to get inside the teeth of North Carolina defensively right. was a huge concern. So then Tennessee started forcing the ball in the gaps that weren't there, and they got careless with it. I mean, connecting a big-time ball game. Tell you, that basketball is magnified. Oh, that North Carolina run game, they have scored when they ripped it off the defensive glass, but they've also gotten out off those Tennessee turnovers and converted. And the effort plays, the follow plays, the speed of North Carolina has been so impressive in this game. Connect again, just taking the ball, there's nowhere to go. And as good as North Carolina has been on offense, their defense has been right there, step for step for Hubert Davis. So we are set for our second half of our Sonic Blockbuster, and it's been a bust for Tennessee. Four different guys, Ryan, Davis, Baycott, Ingram, combined for 52 of the 61 Carolina points. Look at our thoughts from Myron, who talked with Coach Barnes, or was talked to by Coach Barnes. In just a second, as Ziegler has the ball, Tennessee tries to crawl back. Adu, tough shot, but he gets it. Myron. He was certainly frustrated, not surprisingly. But I said, you know, what was the message at halftime? He said he told his team that was the worst 20 minutes of basketball that's been played at Tennessee since I've been here. Mm. He said, we're going to find out in the second half what we're made of. But he said there were defensive breakdowns, lack of effort. But he said it's the worst it has been since his time at Tennessee. Boy, did Baycott just move Adu from one side of the paint to the other in an easy bucket. And I, I agree with Rick Barnes' assessment of his team. You go back and watch his first year. And this is a program that has really established himself nationally as a standard of physicality, defense, toughness, body blows, none of it in the first half. In the second half, Adu just accepts the move of Baycott. Escovy, Adu was planted down low, and that time Baycott got behind him. That's a foul and a chance for a three-point play. Well, but the ball has moved faster on that possession for Tennessee than it did the entire first half. And North Carolina played with a hot ball in the offensive in their first half, and Adu does a good job of just slipping out of it and showing his numbers to the passer. But it all starts with that boomerang fast pass up top. It gives Adu an angle. Carolina attempted 10 more free throws than Tennessee in the first half. Adu makes his first and only free throw of the game. Tennessee 7 of 7 from the line, and Carolina is 16 of 16. How good is Elliot Cadeau and R.J. Davis to the ball again? One combined turnover between two point guards on the floor. So good, so clean and efficient. Cadeau, six assists, no turnovers. Baycott, and it's all going Armando Baycott's way. This is the bounce back game they assumed they were going to get after what happened to him during the tournament. Good position that time, Adu, and a foul by Baycott. He reached in there working on Armando Baycott down low. Adu twice now, Jimmy. He's gotten behind him. Well, this is where Baycott, I think, has to continue to grow. And he's never been a pound you, back of the basket guy, drop step, dunk you, and his defender. But he is good with those finesse shots from four, five, six feet, really turning either shoulder. And I talked about how tremendously he cares about that North Carolina jersey and program. But he's just sitting out with three fouls. And I know it's a 21-point game, but boy, things can change for Tennessee because of their capability on the defensive end. Can they lock up right now with Baycott on the bench and cut into this lead? So Washington comes back into the game. Jalen Washington, the sophomore. Out of Gary, Indiana at 6'10". He had a hard time defending the Tennessee bigs. Per square foot, there's more banners in this arena than yeah, any arena in college fact. basketball. That's a fact. We walked in today and started looking around at all the banners, the Final Four National Championship banners, the retired jerseys, the jerseys of honor, the first-team academic All-American banners. 
The banner, the local banner company is doing well in Chapel Hill. James three, no good, and a good rebound in traffic for Mac Ryan. They will try to push. It worked for them in the first half. Ingram's three, that's good. And the push of the ball. Electric by Cadeau. And he throws strikes. He doesn't throw balls high and wide. He delivers right in the shot pocket nine out of ten times. Connects. He buries the three. They left him open. That's dangerous. But Cadeau with seven assists, no turnovers in 16 minutes. He's a reclassified kid that could be a senior in high school this year. However, he is 19, so he's old for his class. Right. Man, I talked to Hubert Davis about a month ago. He said this kid sees it a play or two ahead of most. Well, they set up another wide open three, and Ryan buries it. Eight assists for Cadeau. And it all starts with that paint punch by Cadeau. He goes right and rider. And if you can't take it away, hard to guard, two in white. Carolina, 9 of 18 from three. That's a 50% clip. Vescovi lost the ball, and it's Carolina. Another turnover, a lot of one-on-one -on -one action from Santiago Vescovi. I mean, that's not even a screen set, just kind of a fake screen that Cadeau just works off of. And there's that power push with speed that Cadeau, even off balance, man, the pass is thrown right at belt level. Cannot do it any better. Hancock goes to the bench, Jimmy, and they increase their lead. Cadeau pushes again. There's going to be a foul underneath, either on Vescovi. Yes, it is on Santiago Vescovi. You know, Hubert told us this morning what an experience it'll be for a guy like Ryan and Cadeau to play in this environment. Ingram, we haven't seen how they're going to deal with being at home in front of a whiteout, and I'd say they're doing fine. I thought it was a great point by Huber because there's 21,000 here. The, the place was jumping. And sometimes you worry about how your own guys yeah. go beyond the magic level, as my head coach Eddie Sutton used to talk about. They were at the right level from the opening tip. Preseason number one last year didn't make the tournament after a Final Four appearance for Hubert Davis a couple of years ago. If you look at this team, and it's early, obviously, but yeah. Jimmy, what a test here. And they have the parts and the pieces. Good luck again, and he missed the layup. Ryan, a good pass from Cadeau. He's got that vision. Adu, that's short, tipped up and in by Josiah Jordan James. Yeah, I'm with you on North Carolina, though. It, it, it is early, but the class of this league is Duke and North Carolina, and Duke will have to be at least 10 points better than Arkansas tonight in Bud Walton Arena. They have played in some hostile environments over the years, but nothing like is waiting for them that they're going to see when they walk out of that tunnel. Well, there you go. Cadeau drew two. That left Washington to clean it up. Connect. He trades places. James knocks down a three. Josiah Jordan James is having a terrific game. He's up to 17 on 7 of 9 shooting. When you look at Tennessee, they got... Dalton comes in 38% from the three. Ganey 38%. Josiah Jordan James 42%. A good shooting ball club that North Carolina has clamped down on so far. Cabell hard drive and he will go to the free throw line. Starting to be assertive with the drives. One led to a follow up flush. And now he will go to shoot two. They still maintain a 21 point cushion. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball presented by Continental Tire is brought to you by the Sonic Footlong Quarter Pound Chili Cheese Coney for a limited time only at Sonic. That's a lot. And Alexis December to remember sales event. Tis the season to work your magic now through January 2nd. We're finding a Sonic on the drive home. <laughs> Hasn't been easy for Tennessee early this season, given the big men that they have had to face. Think about Purdue and Zach Eady and Kansas, Hunter Dickinson, and now Armando Bacot. What do they have in common? They've all had success. Why? Well, the interior strength of Tennessee has been tested by three of the best in college basketball. And Eady right now would be the lead in the National Player of the Year. Hunter Dickinson, to me, would be right behind him. And Bacot tonight now will start grabbing people's attention, saying we can't count him out quite yet.
You know, Tennessee's ball pressure, Ravi, tonight has been a big concern because North Carolina has had a lot of freedom moving the ball anywhere, anytime they want to. And Tennessee came in, the numbers said they were the best defensive team in the country, but, you know, Baycott is a type of kid that he knew he owed North Carolina a big-time game on a big-time stage. He did not show up as a scorer in Atlanta as he dominated the glass. But you just sensed the seriousness I did about him today when he was the first guy on the floor an hour before practice started. More than capable of having that All-America type season and getting this Tar Heel team back to a Final Four. Look at the group that he's in. Only those three guys have 70 or more career double-doubles. Pretty good company for the guy who named the Mondo Burger. <laughs> Ziegler finds Adu, and that's too strong. Washington rips it down. No sign of any let up here, and the pass down low. Kick Davis, three. Buries it. Boy, are they moving that hot potato around. And he gets that ball from his chin to the rim in a split second. A small guard that gets it off quick. Again, that ball movement for North Carolina has been so good. Just their awareness, Washington knowing I've always got a shooter on that backside bomb area. Total understanding of how they're moving the ball is North Carolina. 17 assists in the game. Roy Williams told me he had a burger named after him as well. Is that right? Well, I'm just, that's what the coach said. <laughs> and when the coach speaks in this building, <laughs> what are you going to do? Question out? Of course he had a burger named after him. Connect knocks down a three. 54 first round guys out of North Carolina in the NBA draft. Seven national titles, 63 first team All Americans. Trimble all the way, blocked that time by Adu. Who's it going to go against? It's going to be Tennessee basketball. If you're Tennessee, you look up, just about 15 to go in the second half. Can you get this thing close to 10 with 10 minutes to go? Would that be a really aggressive push? But that's the number that you're playing with right now if you're Rick Barnes. They do with a little floater. They have found something with Adu in this second half. Adu had to fight himself after the way that uh, he was watching Baycott. Ingram with 18, back on the floor. Davis, boy, a lot of contact. He's going to go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Of yeah. course, this being V Week and being here in North Carolina, one of my good friends, and of course, one of the greatest alums ever for North Carolina, Stu Scott, who played football here, and of course, very involved. He passed away from cancer, but was so significant and continues to be the heart of some of the fundraising for the V Foundation. He played football here. He gave the commencement of dress here in 2001. He died in January of 2015, eight years ago. And his impact on this campus and to so many people here and around the country continues to be felt through the V Week. You know, we've all been touched by that brutal disease. 100% like of your donation goes to cancer research, which is so important. Jimmy, it's game-changing research. It really is. And the number of people who survive and live after being di diagnosed with cancer is huge relative to where it was as recently as 20 years ago. You can join the fight against it. Visit v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation, 100% goes directly to cancer research. And of course, we now see back on X, Dick Vitale. Voice slowly coming back. And nobody has done more in the fight against cancer than that guy. It's been ridiculous. No, you think of this week, and you think of Jimmy V, and then you think of Dick Vitale. Oh my gosh. And his commitment to that cancer research, especially the pediatric side of it. And that entire year that Dick Vitale was battling back from cancer, Rick Barnes sent him a prayer, a texted personalized prayer every single day that. Dickie V was going through that fight. I think Rick Barnes is one of the guys that Dick Vitale is going to have honored at his gala coming up this next summer. Davis pull up three, way too strong. The hustle will pay off. And another rebound. 
and that is going to be a shot clock violation. Unbelievable hustle by Carolina, and then the loose ball picked up by Trimble amongst three Tennessee players. Quicker, more alert, and more urgency by North Carolina tonight from the opening tip. You got guys watching from Tennessee, white, the guys in white are pursuing the basketball. An ugly film oh. for Rick Barnes to digest when they get back to Knoxville. Foul on Jalen Washington. Good story about Jim Galvano that was shared with us today. I told you he was one and three in this building. He won his last game here, but when Carmichael closed down, they played one of the last games there. They had been the last game there. He was coach for North Carolina State. <laughs> the game ended. The ball was being taken, and he grabbed the basketball after a loss because he said, I want to be the last guy to make a basket at Carmichael. Yeah, he went and made a layup. Right? Made a layup. Yeah. Connect right off that inbounds. That's going to play for Tennessee. He buries another three, and the lead is 18. And you mentioned Carmichael Auditorium. I think about the old flip cards in the corner. Sure. The guys used to stand there and flip yep. the score, and we always thought it was just to have an extra score for the players. That's wrong. Dean Smith wanted it there, so when he watched film, he could always see what the score was because you're filming a game. Your student managers, they're not going up to the scoreboard. And they actually carried that tradition over into the Dean Dome for a couple of years. Got away from it. Connect that. That's what he can do. We can talk about his lack of. They got to run it. They got two on one. Trimble. Ryan had it blocked. What a play by Gady. This is a big trip here, and they're going to get a foul on Cormac Ryan. All of a sudden, the momentum moves to Tennessee with Baycott and Cadill on the bench. Well, Tennessee has two minutes and 39 seconds to work with to get this thing to a 10-point game. What effort and no give up out of game. And Zakai Ziegler puts the brakes on it. Defender on the trail side runs him over. And a big possession right here for Tennessee to just have some type of belief. And we're hanging in this game. Zakai Ziegler continues mentally to work back from the ACL. Physically, he's there. Mentally, it's another challenge. He's only got two points tonight on one of three shooting. Connect's been the guy with 26. Fade away, and he will shoot to Ryan. Picks up another foul. You know, Rick Barnes goes isolation for Dalton Connect. Those are similar size guys, similar athletic ability. And Cormac Ryan just Lost his distal at the very end of the play. Here we go. Wu Pig is waiting on Duke. And 9 to 15 tonight. Right after us, Bud Walton, what do you think that atmosphere will be like? <laughs> it's going to be off the charts, especially considering they named Bobby Petrino the offensive coordinator for Arkansas football today. Just, the mojo is working right it's now in back. Fayetteville. I got people text me, you got tickets, I'm camping out. Uh, but I. Kyle Filipowski and those guys, they've been in big games before, but that atmosphere will be unmatched. And it's the 30th anniversary of that title game where Scotty Thurman knocked down a huge shot from the right side to give Arkansas a national championship. I will say this, Trevin Brazil from Arkansas went 0 for 4 against North Carolina down in Atlantis and only had two rebounds. He's a preseason all-SEC guy, projected first-round draft pick. He has to show up tonight in Fayetteville for Arkansas to have any chance. They made a decision yet on Tremont Mark. Do they know if he's coming back to play? I, I would be very surprised if Tremont Mark plays tonight. Okay. I, I think he might be even be another game away. That was a very scary fall, Ravi, in Atlanta. It took him three hours to get the feeling back in his left leg. Oh. He, was at, he had a 34-point game going. Another loose ball, and you got to make sure in the corner there that Elliot Cadeau is okay. He ran right into the bench. He was run over as Josiah Jordan-James went to get the basketball. There was no intent on it. But you put yourself in Cadeau's shoes. He's 6'1". Jordan-James is 6'7", 220. And there's no room to land. Kind of landed awkwardly, too, slipping into the bench. He's okay. 15-point game. Well, does Tennessee have the defensive chops now to get a couple of stops in a row? We're about to find out and put game pressure on North Carolina. They got Cadell back in the game. Wojcik has the ball on the right wing. 
10 on the shot clock. And Davis thought about a fadeaway. He didn't take it. Now five. Cadill penetrates. He got blocked by two different guys. Phillips was the last one to come over. James in the paint. No good. Went after it. Bacock picks up another rebound. And now Carolina has numbers. Davis. Huge. That's a huge turn right there. That's how you do it and the closest defender is six feet or further. All the analytics say that ball is going to drop about 47, 48 percent of the time. Connect, boy, that's pretty. He takes that one and he's got 29. Ravi, it's the long reach of connect that's so hard to pick up on film, but his ability to make guarded shots at the rim, not only from the three point line, but that long reach. And they haven't got it to a 10 point game, they still have 90 seconds to go, but. All right, we, we, we got some complaints yet. from uh, Jay Williams, yep. Jay Billis, Danny Ferry called. We'll do the all SEC. Danny Ferry, Ferry called. Ferry called as well. <laughs> Ravi, I'm losing friends over this deal tonight, but yes, here we you go. Are, and there's all that SEC list is short. You know, how do you argue with Pistol Pete Maravich and Shaq? Ernie Grunfeld, mm -hmm. uh, Charles Barkley, and I got to put Anthony Davis on there for how dominant he was on the defensive end of the floor, the most dominant defender I've ever seen in the SEC. But those are my five on my all-SEC team. And I would go to war with those guys anytime. I like to fight back by Rick squad right now. And it's, again, you're trying to get it as close to 10 as you can with 10 minutes to go. They're within the puncher's distance right now. I'm sorry, what? Bernard King checking in. He's now called. He and Danny he, Ferry have now called. Yes. <laughs> Mahmoud Abdul Rauf apparently is <laughs> on social. <laughs> it's a it's a list you can't win because people have favorite players, favorite schools, but your teams would compete very well. <laughs> they would. Very well. <laughs> If you don't agree with my five, who do you take off? Right. Just that's a turnover there. The that's... Is this more about Tennessee's effort or about lack of execution? Because it feels like when Carolina gets a chance, they are making the buckets. Yeah, that's, well, Tennessee, they, they got the fire lit underneath their rear ends at halftime. Myron was probably pretty kind in terms of what he actually reported, what actually happened. Wow, oh, connect has 31. One. Just going right through North Carolina's defense. And he's with 10 physical of, drives. He's 11 of 14 from the floor. He's missed three of his 14 shots. 14 point lead. Can they get it down to 10? Ingram doubled quickly and he throws it away. Ganey in a foot race will win it. Lay it up and in. Here come the Volunteers. Getting a little restless inside the Dean Smith Center. Now the good teams have a way to figure it out within the game. They don't wait till the next game or the next film session. And Tennessee has pushed that button in the second half. Good pass inside. Baycott will go to the free throw line. Very different second half for Tennessee. Well, Dal Dalton Connect, his confidence offensively is off the charts. It's as good as anybody in college basketball. And that drop coverage by Baycott was, had no impact at all. The, you talked about Ganey just wins the foot race to the ball. You look all the, up all of a sudden, and 21,000 are dialed in here right now saying, we got a lot of ball left in front of us. Who did Jimmy put on that ACC team all time? But my phone's blowing up, the former players. <laughs> no one's happy. Others, do, do some fall into the others receiving vote category? <laughs> <laughs> The great Kennedy Dykes wants to know Bernard King, That's, question mark? I, I agree with her. Special K from Special K to Special K. And a rare miss by Baycott. 13 points, Jimmy, if we get some to 10. There's 10, 14 to go. The connect has lived one-on-one. -on -one. Lionel Simmons, the most ever against the Carolina team. 35, connect, good defense. That's a jump ball. Did he have arm or was it all ball from R.J. Davis? He had arm and ball right in front of Ron Groover. His connect drives this ball. Watch the reach in right there. That's a, that's arm and ball, yeah, but Ron okay. Groover sees the ball first. That got, I think he 
he got scraped on that elbow and have to either get this blood issue fixed within 20 seconds. And Rick Barnes is talking to the official like, well, how do you think yeah, exactly. he got a bloody elbow? It may not have actually even occurred on that play, but I mean, it's such a big possession. I talked about it four minutes ago at the 10 minute mark. Can you get it to a 10 point game? They're capable right now with 14 on the shot clock. Ganey can still bust a three. Connect got that arm wrapped. They've been very good. Tennessee has in short clock situations from baseline out of bounds under. And now they go side out of bounds. Connect a dangerous guy as the trigger guy that you can lose if you're not careful. And they're playing that one on one game. He's got Ingram on him. Five seconds to shoot it. Ganey rises too strong. Phillips may have pushed off to the backside, and he did. So that was such a big possession. And North Carolina's got a chance to go down and continue to push this thing away from that 10-point mark. Black go inside to Baycott. Just look at Tennessee's lineup. Who they had to try to check him with. Gonna go Horn Series first. I dive Baycott, back screen for him, post him up. This is Baycott time. Double right hand, right, don't you? Freshman Phillips. Yeah. There is the double from Ziegler. He knocked it out of bounds. It will be an automatic double team with Baycott with his small lineup. Ziegler is so quick and so low, always at ball level. So good at scraping down in those double team situations. Withers is wide open underneath. Wide open. And he missed the play. They're turning it over. They're missing some shots they didn't. And Connect all the way to the rack. Lays it up and in. Dalton Connect. 33 points. Lead down to 11. Ravi, he is a first-round draft pick. Dalton Connect. And no one thought that when they picked him up out of the portal. But offensively, he could score in an NBA game right now. His career high is 34. He's one off of that. Cadell passes it up. Ingram. He made them all in the first half. He missed that one. They'll get another chance. That's off. And that's out of bounds. Off Carolina. Game pressure is on North Carolina for the first time in this game. And it's all because of Dalton Connect. He was loose with the ball in the first half, but he's much tighter now with the drive. And he's keeping the ball lower. He was high dribbling through traffic the first half. He's low power dribbling the second half. Oh my gosh, what a comeback by the volunteer. Here's a big one from Ziegler. It in a three pointer 82 74, and Tennessee has made a statement. You find out about your team in adversity way more than when things are rolling. First time they are within single digits since the 12 47 mark of the first half. Great drive there, and a crossover by RJ Davis, the senior. Such a good layup maker. There was bodies all around for in white. His ability to lock in on that rim and not lose his concentration. Connect yeah. double team. He should have numbers. James thought about a three. Boy, Ziegler just hit one. When he's comfortable and confident, he would launch that one, and he didn't, and he missed the two-point shot. Trying to get position on Phillips. They threw it away. Good effort. That time by Cade Phillips, the freshman. And you can't feed the post when you have to is a big concern for Hubert Davis. What a comeback by the Tennessee Volunteers. Call people and tell them to put us back on. <laughs> a lot of people left. You got to come back. Are you sure they left? Kevin Coach in studio, Florida Wake, a slugfest over on ESPN2. Coach down goes the bucket and Zion pulling. Zion pulling, playing downhill. The UC Riverside transfer plays the contact. No foul, Casey. Somebody blow a whistle. I got mugged. Tied at 66 over on ESPN2. Jeremy Roach, better than 11 points per game. Duke in hostile territory. Fayetteville, Arkansas will be rocking tonight. Duke and the Hogs, Ravi, coming up next down there. I mean, that's where Jimmy lives down in that area. And every time we go down to visit, we haven't been invited over to the house. I mean, you got to really make peace to get in the <laughs> folks down in Fayetteville. Hostile is not a strong enough word for what's going on in Bud Walton Arena right now. <laughs> I don't know what the next word is, but it's above hostile. Myron, what happened during that timeout? 
Dalton Connect is, is giving everything he has. They were working on his right calf with a massage gun, some cramping issues. Obviously, he's putting out a lot of effort in this comeback effort. He had cramps in the Syracuse game. He found Josiah Jordan James. The lead, once 24, is seven. How about the fight and the toughness by Connect because they doubled the ball out of his hand, but the rise and fire to reverse the ball. Connect has grown up. They come in this goal too here, Jimmy. And trapped on that sideline, Davis. Phillips, the freshman, Baycott, the veteran. They thought should own Phillips right now at the rim. Davis, oh, that's huge as he fired a three. The moxie that this kid's playing with this year is as good as you'll see from a small guard. Connect pulls up in front of Baycott. That's short. Maybe some tired legs, cramping legs. Didn't have that elevation. As good as he's been, that's probably one that was, he would like to have back. I know Rick Barnes, not at all pleased with first side of the floor, no pass jumpers. Davis, pretty pass, Baycott, and they're going to get James. He thought he had all ball. A foul on Josiah Jordan James. Watch Dalton connect, though, two possessions ago, the trap of the life out of him. But he rises up and finds not only the... This, the second guy around, the skip pass was perfect. And then look at R.J. Davis. Mm. Real jumper Davis from that three ball right now so far this season. And at one time, Jimmy, his Tennessee allowed over 90 points since 2019. Only once, and that was to a Kentucky 2021 team. They gave up 107. That's over 90 we're talking about. Another free throw will pull him within one of that. Watch Baycott. The other thing about his free throw grab, he doesn't stare down the rim. He gets up. Now, watch right here. Just at the last second, gets his eyes on it, shoots it. That's much stroke. How many times in a ball game do you catch the ball and stare it down for six or seven seconds before you release it? You don't. He's turned his free throw into a much more natural shot. Crowd on his feet here at the Dean Smith Center for the first time all night. Ball out of bounds, and it's going to be Carolina. Ingram got a hand on it, went off with Connect. Tennessee has been so good in the second half, playing with a clean ball, but just careless passes, and Ingram talked about his versatility on offense. He can literally and has guarded two through five this year for Hubert Davis. Can go. That's going to be a foul on the floor before he shoots. Hey, Jimmy, Saturday, the Tar Heels open up conference play right here in Chapel Hill. They're going to host Florida State, 2 o'clock Eastern time on the ACC network. Conference play right around the corner. Gives us an opportunity to kind of look at both of the conferences. Tennessee was the preseason pick to win the SEC. Kentucky has looked awfully impressive out of the gate. Last couple of games, high scoring, kind of back to the feel good days for Kentucky offensively. Reed Shepard, Dillingham, they've been outstanding. A little freer. They're a fun watch right now, Kentucky is. And I would give them an advantage four or five weeks into the season over Tennessee at this point. But I, I was on that Kentucky staff. There will be a lot of dogs and a lot of babies named Reed <laughs> over the next year <laughs> in the Bluegrass State. Right. Just mark it down. Ganey. Too strong. Great rebound in traffic by Baycott. Got to make him. Uh, you dug yourself a monster hole. You got to make the open ones in the second half. They caught a rebound away from another double double. We show you that impressive list he's on. He spins into the middle. And in traffic, Ingram picks up the rebound. Push it up back. Push. And he muscles it up and he will shoot a couple. It was some contact. And he may have hit his head on the floor as he's lifted up by his teammates. Well, the free throw attempts in this game are getting ready to be, what, 24 to 9 in favor of North Carolina. I thought Baycott got fouled right in front of the rim. He did a really good job of speed rolling. And that naked, empty corner ball screen action. He didn't get the whistle. But now Harrison Ingram goes to the line, and this will be the 27th and 28th free throw attempt against Tennessee. At 9. At 9. That is a major, major story. Remember. Tennessee only eight free throw attempts in their last game against Kansas. 
Harrison Ingram recently had said, I've never had this much confidence here in Carolina. And a day like this, and in front of this crowd and the performance he's putting up, it's only going to increase. Look, Hubert talked about it last year. They, they didn't have a reliable, effective wing player that could back somebody down, that could extend with the three-pointers that everybody we played had him. Yeah. I needed to get one. And Ingram has certainly delivered as he's filled that void. And the lead back up to 15, and the crowd back on its feet. Kick corner, and that's a big three. It comes off the hand of Ganey. And a quick timeout for Tennessee. The lead is 12. And it all starts again with Dalton Connect's toughness and size to get the ball out of the double team. Swing, swing, and a corner three. Still got a game, Ravi. Don't leave me. Unranked Virginia has locked down a and and coach look at Andrew Rode. The St. Thomas transfer, a little shake, a little bait, knocked down that three. Virginia did a great job rebounding the ball and forcing a and into a jump shooting team. Ten-point game on ESPN2. Meantime, Trevin Brazil. They're going to need him tonight. No Traymond Mark for Arkansas. Razorbacks get number seven Duke in their dojo, Ravi, coming up next. Yeah, SEC, ACC, the first year of this challenge. And right now, the SEC, after yesterday, winning four of the seven. Looks like an ACC early return night. And here, the question is, is it too little, too late for Tennessee in their comeback? Still got five minutes. You're down 12. Eric Musselman may coach the game without his shirt on. We've seen him celebrate yeah, after we big win. He, yeah. he may coach tonight without his shirt on. That have a positive impact? It could, or it could go south. <laughs> Go with 10 assists and no turnovers. Ryan back in the game. That's short. Adu picks it up. They need stops. They need points. I'm going to get on top of Dalton Connect. He's got a mismatch on the inside. Cadeau fighting with all he's got. Now Ryan with four fouls. They double him. Adu was. Waiting for it, Ziegler no good, and a loose ball, and it goes again to Carolina. Hubert Davis doing all he can to make sure Dalton Connect doesn't beat him. Has continued to constantly double the ball out of Connect's hands. Ingram again, this is what they missed the last few years. Davis. Yeah, that Villanova back down. How about Villanova losing tonight to St. Joe's by double figures? Ziegler has Adu on the roll. There it is, and he had the alley oop, but that may be the fifth on Ryan. And he is fouled out of the game. Cormac Ryan, he is out. All right, under four we go. 92 80, Tennessee with the ball when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. Blue Devils, Razorbacks coming up. Final four right here between Tennessee and Carolina. Kyle Filipowski has been outstanding. The center, just another seven-footer. It's 20 that can go out and just drop threes on you. He leads the Blue Devils into Bud Walton Arena to take on the Arkansas Razorbacks. And that game will start on ESPN News just a couple of minutes from now. And then, of course, as soon as we are done here, they will take over on ESPN. Well, he is such a matchup problem, Kyle Filipowski, a seven-footer that plays the guard position, really. Can drive it, can shoot it. So good with both hands. And that's where Trevin Brazil has to impact the game tonight for Arkansas. You cannot allow Filipowski to go in there and get 25, 26 points. Brazil has the athleticism and the length to stay up with him and make life difficult. How impressive has Elliot Cadeau been in this ball game, Ravi? He had 10 assists and no turnovers. No turnovers. No turnovers. He only has that one every point. day, right, with just one point. That's every a, day. That's an amazing stat that you would take absolutely as a head coach in your point guard. Big miss there from Zakai Ziegler, a chance to pull it within 10. It stays 12 as he missed the free throw. Rondo Baycott picks up another double-double. First of his career, double team on Ingram, and then Ziegler backs off it. 3.38 to go. 
And here's the countdown with five seconds. He got James in the air, and he threw up an air ball. And another hustle rebound by Carolina. That went off the iron. Good hustle by Ziegler to keep that from going out of bounds. This is a must possession for Tennessee. At least get to the free throw stride to stop the clock. But they cannot come up empty. They're going to hang in this game. Connect in the left corner. Now he comes out and picks up the ball. He's got Trimble, a great defender on him, and he goes finger roll with the left. The long reach again, Ravi. 35. It's really unguardable because Trimble is the best one-on-one -on -one defender that Hubert Davis has. And just no answer for the long reach of the law by Dalton Connect. And they come down to free throws for Carolina. They've made 24 of 28 in this game. Another big possession for a team trying to come back. From 24 down. This is punch four for North Carolina. They're four guy backing in isolation. Davis high arcing three, too strong. Loose ball. Out of bounds off Tennessee. Well, the film session's got to include loose balls that went the way of North Carolina. They've been a step quicker since we started this game. Yes, they have. Carolina's got Davis, Baycott, and Ingram with 20 or more points tonight. Three guys, 20 points or more. Cadell fires to the corner. Davis, high arcer, the floater, no good. And that's a good call. There was a push from the back on Baycott. Not a real aggressive push, but it's just enough. For Bert Smith to make the call, connect right there, gets his elbow. Yeah, gets his elbow and then extends it in the back. Could have called but it on Gainey, Gainey too, right? Gainey pushed as well. How big has Armando Baycott's free throws been so far this season, even in this game? 10 of 11 so far tonight. Career. 22 points. I think a career. 69. 60, yeah. Or maybe even lower, but last year was at 66%. But we'll simplified it. One motion. A couple of costly ones, though, right now down the stretch. 11 rebounds, 22 points. 66% right last four years and 86% tonight now 10 of 12 and each one down the stretch here is huge a little too strong there and Adu has it wow they will double connect again and get the ball out of his hands that's going to be a foul on Ingram Ravi why would you reach a foul 30 feet from the basket your double team is coming to get the ball out of the hands of connect and now you're going to stop the clock and with Canada lost their discipline against Villanova, they fouled three three-point shooters in that game, which ultimately was probably the difference. They've left the door open now with another undisciplined play defensively. Hubert Davis described the win against Arkansas as the happiest he's been as a head coach because of the response. Barnes is getting a similar response tonight from his Tennessee team. On a half, he described as the worst his team has ever, ever played, played since he's been at Tennessee. Throw the ever word around. <laughs> he's waiting to get Mayshack. With this, we'll have 37 points as a visitor at the Dean Dome. Lionel Simmons had the most ever against Carolina, 37. So he's matched that. That was in 1988 with LaSalle. You take Adu out and come to the full court. Oh, that pass hurt. in. Who's that off of? It's off of Ganey. They can't check until it gets to under two minutes, but you've got your full court, your best man-to-man -man defensive squad for Tennessee is on the floor. And Carolina has to handle it, make a second or third cut. Trimble got rid of it quickly. Neck almost had it, but here's Cadell. And they will settle it down. They led by 24 at one point, and we're going to get a timeout. Time we're going to be talking over with two minutes and one second to go. Give the NBA Friday night. You'll see the Celtics. They are coming off a game in which they made 21 threes, and they're 8-0 at home. They will take on Joel Embiid, who is the leading scorer in the NBA. The nightcap is Kevin Durant, who's second in the league in scoring at over 31 points a game. 
Jokic is seventh in the NBA in scoring. Boston the best record in the league. That's a terrific doubleheader on Friday night. The ESPN NBA double dip. Well, Dalton Connect will be scoring next year in yeah. that league as well. 37 is the most by a UNC visitor in the last 14 seasons and most against any UNC in any game since Malik Monk had 47 in December back in 2016 in Lexington. All right, with a 92-84 score and a timeout, let's go back to KC in the studio. Yeah, and Ravi, we want to let you know Duke in Arkansas is underway right now over on ESPN News. No Traymon Mark, the huge story for the Razorbacks. Tyrese Proctor has an early three. Arkansas has just answered a 4-3 lead. It's up next here on ESPN. Ravi? Right, KC, thank you. It's really interesting what the message to Dalton Connect is going to be because on one hand, He's got 37 points. He's kept them in this game. But on the other hand, we saw some of those decisions, lack of hustle in the first half. I wonder how you think Rick Barnes presents the postscript about tonight's game to him. I think it's going to be a tale of two halves. This kid has grown up within this game. Tighter, stronger, tougher with the ball in traffic. He's made winning plays even as a non-scorer, although he has 37, and he's held his own defensively. And it is a must-stop possession for Rick Barnes's guys. Where does Hubert Davis go after the timeout? You love Cadeau Davis going downhill. Baycott should have at least a free throw opportunity at the end of the pos possession. Davis pulls up. That's a tough shot. That's off to the right rebound. Josiah Jordan James. Connect goes and gets the ball. He drives and oh boy, he may have hurt his leg. It seemed to almost give out. He didn't have any explosiveness off that left ankle. He's going to tie that shoe. And he went to take off, Jimmy, and he just had no elevation. Watch that left ankle. Right there, yeah. He stepped yeah. on the foot of Trimble and rolled that thing to the outside. He just stepped on the foot of Trimble. There didn't appear to be a lot of contact created by Trimble. Medical staff to the Garrett Maidenwald out there to help connect off. Well, you can only hope if you're a Tennessee fan that that's an ankle sprain and not worse. And one of the all-time great performances by a visitor in the Dean Dome all on their feet, showing their appreciation for this kid's effort tonight. And when he cramped up against Syracuse in the preseason tournament, he then had said after, he'd never cramped up in his life. He had never experienced that. And this is obviously not a cramp situation, but Dalton Connect sits on that bench. Somebody else will shoot the free throws for Tennessee, obviously. With a buck 39 to go, Jonas Adu is going to be the free throw shooter. Yeah, Hubert Davis gets to make the choice. The injured player can't step to the charity stripes. They go to Adu. Adu's one for one from the free throw line tonight. 66% this year is Adu. And two big ones right here. With Connect on the bench, given what he's been able to do tonight, you have to wonder where points are going to come from. Adu calmly knocks down that first free throw. Tennessee has shot 65% from the field and 64% from three in the second half. You're going to sub Adu out and get, an, again, a, a more active, quicker defender on the floor for their full court press as he comes with Cade Phillips. You continue to work on the ankle of Connect. The pressure from Tennessee as Ingram and Cadeau try to bring it up. Two possession game. And Cadeau will be fouled by Ganey. He's going to be line. Cadeau has attempted four free throws. He's made one tonight. Well, th this is the next step for Cadeau because right now he's not a close you out point guard from the free throw line, Rav. He's 52% from the charity stripe coming in. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with his stroke. It's not broke. But he has got to 
become that late closeout, keep the ball in my hands, trust me at the free throw shot, well done for Hubert Davis. Elliot Cadeau, a magical performance with the ball tonight, running this high octane offense. And it's high octane against a good defense, great defense in Tennessee. They've got 94 points. No connect for Tennessee on the offensive end. Ziegler. Ganey rises. Too strong. Rebound. Meshack ripped at it. That's off the foot of Cadeau. Good hustle by Jemai Meshack. Well, good job by North Carolina, though. When they did switch, they switched out and absorbed the ball. Got outside that three-point line. No airspace for Tennessee to operate off of. No Dalton connect on the floor. He is on the bench with an ankle that was rolled. He has 37 points, and he almost have forgotten about Santiago Vescovi, who checks back into the game. Well, he comes for offense right now. Meshack, the defender, sits. Danny wide open three. Short. Vescovi got the rebound and kicks it. Ziegler needs it. No good, and it's Davis who pulls it down with a minute to go. And an eight-point lead. Got to get him, right? And two good, really, really good looks. Danny had the one, Ziegler had one. Davis is a 91% free throw shooter this season. And quite a statement for North Carolina, especially in the first half, and they opened up a 24-point lead. And with less than a minute to go, a chance to bump it back up to 10. Well, this is a year that North Carolina has their eyes set on establishing North Carolina back on the national level. And their schedule now going forward. Tennessee tonight, they just came off of a Tough two-game stretch, Villanova and Arkansas, but Florida State, as you mentioned earlier, and then UConn, Kentucky, Oklahoma, all before the Christmas break, and this team will be tested, but they are built to pass every one of those tests. They can beat anyone, and I just mentioned they have that four-game stretch coming up. Carolina's made 28 free throws tonight. Ziegler's high three, finds the bottom. Rick Barnes was looking for a foul. He didn't get the call. Seven point cushion with 49.7 to go. Armando Baycott, 22 points, 11 rebounds, 10 of 13 from the free throw line. Brown, he's so good on the move for a kid at 6'11. And time and time again, Hubert Davis got him the ball on the move instead of just camping him down on the low block. And he just sent the message to Tennessee's defense, especially in the first half, several times, just right through the chin and to the rim with the ball. Good with the finesse, Art. Let's crown tonight's player of the game brought to you by Continental Tire. And that is Armando Baycott. They did a terrific job of getting him the basketball. He goes into double figures and rebounds in the second half. Nine turnovers total in the game. 12 for Tennessee, and you can see how that was such a one-sided number in the first half. It's become a lot closer, thus the game has become a lot closer. Well, if you're just not joining us, Rick Barnes was very clear with Byron at halftime. This is the worst Tennessee has played since I've been the head coach in yeah. Knoxville. In a half. In a half. Yeah. But they have... This is a team with a lot of maturity and a lot of pride about how they're supposed to play the game. That's the biggest concern for Tennessee. Absolutely. Dalton Connect rolled his ankle. He stepped on the foot of Seth Trimble. And that left ankle roll, he was in the middle of an historic offensive night here at the Dean Smith Center with 37 points on 13 of 17 shooting. And in Intense amount of pain for watch the last 50 seconds. They get it into Davis. The quick double team comes. Where's he going to go with it? Ziegler's in his face, and he'll call a timeout. Well, now North Carolina will be stuck on that baseline. And yeah, that's not an easy spot to get it in from. Tennessee really good at face guarding and forcing North Carolina to work. And Davis had to pick up his dribble. Once he did, he's only six feet tall. And that length of Rick Barnes' press took away everything. And they're just a stop away and a steal away and a basket away. 
and a lot of pressure still being on North Carolina. If you're Hubert Davis right now, you've got to get the dad gum ball, as Roy Williams would yes. say, inbound safely. To your point, you know, you look at certain teams, the way that it broke down for Tennessee playing Purdue and Kansas, North Carolina now is going to deal with UConn and Kentucky. UConn is another one of those teams, the defending national champion, whose early season schedule out of conference has been crazy. They have a game Friday night against Kansas, so Donovan Klingen at 7-2 will deal with Hunter Dickinson. And then Tuesday, they get Carolina. That UConn game is going to be at the Garden as part of our Jimmy V Classic on Tuesday. I just, I, I, I really believe Kentucky and Tennessee, a little bit of separation between those two and everybody else in the SEC right now. Alabama but that, had that, that league, yes, I, that league is extremely deep, though, Ravi. Don't be surprised. At eight, nine, possibly ten teams. And here you are. You're stuck in this short corner for North Carolina. Not a lot of room to operate. You can't back up as a passer. Tight space to work with. Brutal pass, yeah. and that uh, went off of the hands of Ziegler. Now Harrison Ingram is stuck in the other short corner with not a lot of room to work with. See, he can't back up because of how tight it is right there. Ideally, you'd like to back him up as a passer. If you're Adu, you get right on top of that out-of-bounds line. His officials will seldom call it, even if you're jumping on it, and take away everything you can if you're Adu. you got to get it in and get it over. Baycott, he's trapped now. And he throws a great pass to Davis. And they're able to break it. A winning cut by Davis in the press breaker. Doe will get fouled. That's the guy they want to send to the free throw line. Although he's made the last couple. This could all but salt it away. That's a ridiculously hard place to inbound with a full court pressure. North Carolina did a really good job with a second cut, kept the ball moving. Doe has a chance to prove that, Coach, you can trust me as we move forward to close out game. I am tough enough to step up when I have to make it. Spends a lot of time with Marcus Page working on his shot, which has improved immensely. Not only the free throw, but his jump shooting ability as well. And the first free throw looks really good. I cannot wait to get back to the room and watch Arkansas and Duke coming up next. And I've been in Bud Walton, and you have too, and the building is about to explode, and that could happen multiple times tonight. A chance for Arkansas to erase what was a poor outing in Atlantis. Without Tremont Mark, as Ganey takes it to the hole, he lays it up and lays it in. Another timeout is called by Rick Barnes. Seven point game, 25 to go. Back to KC for an update on that one. Yeah, and Ravi, we've been talking about no Tremont Mark for Eric Musselman. Who else is going to step up? How about Caleb Battle from behind the arc, knocking down the three? 13s on the scoreboard in Fayetteville. The longer that they keep that game competitive, the louder and more difficult it comes for Duke. Yeah, well, Caleb Battle is a big-time scorer, and Eric Musselman has big-time wings. Remember that exhibition game? They just pressured the heck out of Purdue for two hours and got the win. I know it was an exhibition game, but it felt like a real one. And a tremendous early season test for Duke, who's already lost one at home. Look at the ACC. I think there's some separation right now as well with Duke and North yeah. Carolina from the rest of the ACC. Yep. Well, you take a look at the two huddles. This was a once a 24-point game, and now down to seven. We only have 25 seconds to go. A lot of folks, including Tom Izzo, who's a good friend of Rick Barnes, came out and said, hey, you know, he's my buddy, but let's put a little pressure on him. This feels like a Final Four team. They've been to the Sweet 16. They've made the NCAA tournament the last five years in a row. Sweet 16 last year in 2018. Do they have the pieces and maybe connect? And Ganey being the transfers can get them back there. And now that we've seen Hubert Davis's team against a very good defensive Tennessee team put up near 100, do they have the pieces to do that? I don't think there's any question both these teams are capable of getting to the Final Four. Now, it's, it's November, I understand that. But you just look at their roster, how it's built on both ends of the floor. I love the football out-of-bounds play right now as your press breaker. Kadoo lost it. And it's on the ground, and the possession arrow goes to Carolina. And Kadoo is 
feeling a little pain on his head after that. That that football out of bounds under is unguardable. I've yet to see it used where they don't get the ball inbound clean because you're sending trips right all over the floor with different cuts. It's a legal play starting out of bounds like that. It becomes a foot race and it's a foot race right back to the ball. Yeah, they're all holding up their five seconds. Ingram gets it in and the press breaker delivers and will be fouled. Good job by R.J. Davis because Mayshack was the primary defender on him. And R.J. Davis is so good and so fast and plays so low even as a cutter to cut to get yourself open when you're on an island with one of the better defenders in the SEC. Really well done by R.J. Davis. North Carolina for the game is shooting 83% from the free throw line. They have made 30 one free throw tonight. 31 points from the free throw line. Just, just simplify the game, Brad. You've heard me say it multiple times as much as we've been together over the years. Make your free throws, make your layups, win games every single time. And if you can find one, eat your Mondo burger. That's a coach here in Chapel Hill. They get to 100 as Ziegler drives. He's going to get fouled by Cadeau. That's one of those that uh, will have Hubert and his coaching staff kind of shaking their head like, what are we doing? Stop the clock, maybe give him two more points, bring it back to seven, and we'll be shooting more free throws down the other end. Ravi, it's a big step forward, though, for North Carolina. They were the most disappointing team in college basketball last year. Start off number one, but did not even make it to the NCAA tournament, had all types of issues on the floor, off the floor, internally. But this is a connected group. And Tennessee, to me, is still one of the top 15 teams in college basketball, and they absolutely punked the volunteers to the first half. They sure did. Hey, 100 points gets everybody here, and this is important for you, okay. some Bojangles biscuits. Tonight? No, there's a rip off the free throw miss. It stays with Tennessee. Ganey's three, no good, and the rebound, and that will do it with four seconds to go. 100 points for Carolina and a statement win in front of a packed house of 21,000 at the Dean Smith Center. 192 is our final score, Carolina over Tennessee. For Jimmy, Myron Metcalf, our entire crew, I'm Carl Ravitch. Thanks so much for watching this presentation of college basketball on ESPN. Duke and Arkansas, they are already playing. We go to Fayetteville. That's where Dan Schulman and Jay Bellis are.